And now in this episode, I will show you the workflow of Live 2D. Uh, you, you're not likely to be able to start working your hands on a new project immediately after watching this episode, but this is just to give you an overview and have you uh, to have you prepared for what's coming up. So there's five stages of building a Live 2D model. The first step is preparing a texture map. A texture map meaning it's making the material, the graphic material for you to use inside Live 2D. It's something less like what you're seeing right now, a full image, however you start with this. But then it's more like something like this. So you draw this out like you draw naturally, usually if you draw 2D art. And you'll make it into this. And then you'll throw it into Live 2D. Uh, without the background. I'm just showing you a background so you can see all the parts clearly, but uh, without a background, like a PNG. Throw it in and you start you start working Live 2D instead of Live 2D. However, if you're working with Live 2D 2.0 and you have uh, Photoshop, right? You don't have to, you don't you can use any other paint tool, but Photoshop, if you have Photoshop, uh, there's this neat tool you can find on the official website. It's called the Live 2D process script. What it does, it takes this image, assuming that it's in a um, right organization in terms of its layers and yeah, and, and basically layers. If they're in right layers for Live 2D, you can run the script and it will generate this image for you. And I'll talk more about it later on, but sort of get the idea if you have Photoshop better, if you don't have, I'll also cover everything you need to know. So don't worry if you don't have Photoshop or the script. Anyways, that's first step. Make this into this, and then we'll get into Live 2D. So once we, you're done with the materials, it's time to import them into Live 2D. Uh, this is how you set up, this is step two, and this is how you set up the Live 2D workshop or workspace. So when you open Live 2D, it should look exactly like this. And then what you do is drag and drop the full image in first as a guide image. Once you have this ghost transparent image, you can go to step three, which is importing the material. And step three, importing. So let's go here, here. And as you can see, we open up the previous map, texture map. And now, we put them into their uh, corresponding place. I can just circle this with eight dots, a few of them, or just four, even four dots, like a square, and I can press OK, and I can work with them already. I can put them into place. I can scale them perfectly, and you know, sort of that kind of. Uh, you can start working on things. However, you find out that with so little pol uh, uh, vertices or um, I think anchor points, you cannot transform transform them smoothly. They will they will get really broken, glitchy as you start working on them. So, what you need to do is getting into step uh, four. Step four is uh, drawing out the polygons. So you can do them manually like this. Polygons, well, technically you're supposed to draw triangles, right? Because they only work with triangles. Uh, if you do a square or more than three sides, they will still work, but they will. F you'll find them a little bit glitchy as you move them around. So you're supposed to do, draw all the triangles out, and um, press OK. And then there's you, you see the are the, the the polygons that you put in are currently there, and you can start moving around like this, right? If you didn't do that, you're on the right track. So after you have that step four done, step five is uh, defining the parameters. If you've seen the video probably three episodes ago, yeah, th that image, that, that uh, quick quick sh demonstration of how to make things move, that's basically what you had to do now. You need to tell each part uh, to move as what, under what circumstances what they should do. So for say like currently I want to tell this this um, head texture 
to move around when I point to this, uh, this a certain point parts of the scale. So currently this is center, and I want it to move. I want to define the left turning. I want to do this. Maybe do this, this, and this. Maybe like this. It's kind of ugly, but you get the idea, right? So once you define the left side, the far left, and you return to the center, and you scroll, you scale along the scale, and you can see that it will gradually turn to the point where you defined as. So everything in between is set up for you. You just need to tell it where it's originally at and where it's supposed to go to at the end of it and then it will work on its own. Or more extreme example, I can do this and go to the far right. You see this? This is how you work it. So once you've done with all the perimeters, which is the most of your hard work, it should look like something like this. This is uh, the, the final, this finalized work. And uh, as you can see, this isn't one piece of image. Every part is separate, it's in place, and all these perimeters are all set. They are defined perfectly as I, as I want them to be. And individually, you know, everything is smooth, everything is nice, and there's the last part. And you're done with live 2D modeling. You have made yourself a model once you've done all the perimeters. So, these are the five steps, and that's all for a very simplified explanation. Um, however, Live 2D is like any other modeling tools out there. They are very fragile, in a sense that you always can't your, get yourself caught up into troubles without knowing what the cause is, and obviously don't know what the fix is. And it takes a lot of practice to actually work with things smoothly. But that's basically all you have to know about Live 2D. It's, it's a very simple tool. It just kind of stick you when you work on things. And I my following tutorials are basically showing step by step, uh, working from materials to the eyes, to the mouth, to the hair. And I'll try to throw in as many as possible some tips and tricks that would help you avoid uh, common mistakes. Uh, and if you see something weird, as shown in the video, you would know what to do and what caused it and what to be careful next time. And that's sort of the idea of my whole course. And so I will see you in next episode, which is which will be preparing material, the texture material. And so it's more on drawing and how to tailor things uh, for, it, for live 2D purposes. All right, so I'll see you next time at art class.